Hello guys and welcome back. Today we're talking about one of the coolest, strongest and most historically impactful civilization of ancient Italy. No, I'm joking. We're talking about the Nuragic civilization. Maybe I'm being a bit too harsh here because these people are arguably the most obscure and mysterious people to live in the ancient world. The Nuragic people are the perfect example to show how geographic location is the most important factor for the cultural conservation, a culture that for the most part still lives to this day. The islands of Sardinia and Corsica were the location of many different invasions, first from Greeks, then from Carthaginians, then from Romans, Vandals and Byzantines and all throughout these 2,000 years of constant exposure to foreign cultures and languages they maintained theirs up until the early 500s by hiding up on the mountains of what Sardinians called the Barbaja Mountains. The origins of the latter came from the Latin word Barbaria meaning barbarian. The Romans used to refer like this to the lands they could not fully absorb in, into the Sardinian province. The term Nuragic refers to the architectural style which they used to build houses and fortresses. This is the style that helped them fight off any foreign force to try to conquer them. However, not all the people living in Sardinia and Corsica were the same. They didn't even call themselves Nuragic, nor did they call their building Nurags, but uh, Poliobates. The two islands were divided into three main sets of tribes, the Iolais, Yo the Balares, and the Corsicans, all of which have different origins which are pretty interesting. The Iolais were the biggest group in the family, and Greek writer Ponius Mela considered them as the oldest people of the island. This statement is backed up by archaeological evidence that shows the objects uh, in ruins of uh, settlements of the same uh, Eolias style were found all over the two islands and not only on the southern half of Sardinia. Their borders went up to the river Tirso which this map doesn't show and goes actually about uh, 50 kilometers more north but you get the idea. The tribes were originally 40 with all having their own king called Tespiadi and they were all allied with each other in some loose way which definitely did not stop them from killing each other sometimes. This was until the start of the Iron Age at around 900 BC when the kings were kicked out and a united assembly of nobles from all, all, from all of the tribes took their place creating a loose confederation. We know this because Greek historian Diodorus Siculus wrote this on one of his texts where he explained that the Tespiadi took refuge in Cuma, a Greek colony in southern Italy, just a bit north from Naples. The Iolais had quite uh, strong bonds with the Greeks, even before they tried to settle on their land. People have found out the trade happened between them. Greek ceramic was found in Sardinia dating to 800 BC and also other Sardinian products were found in Rhodes and other Greek islands. Eolais, though, were, were mostly famous for their cheese. The name Eolais refers to the ancient Iberian word for settlement. Also, other terms found in other writing from Sardinia so show some Iberian roots. In fact, a popular theory states that the Nuragic civilization, especially the Eolais, uh, which I want to remind you were the first inhabitants of the island, were originally of pre-Indo-European origin. This does make sense because they do have many parallels with the Basques, which go on until today. They followed a shepherd lifestyle, they hid in mountains from invaders, they were also navigators and kept much of their genetic heritage and language for a long time. The other tribe just north from the Tirso river was called the Balares. They were not native of the island, they originally came from either northern Spain or the Balearic archipelago. It is unclear, but Greek sources claim that they were related to the Cantabri, but again, it's ancient Greeks, so take it with a, with a grain of salt. Unlike uh, the Eolais language, the Balearic language is even closer to ancient Iberian, 
But unlike uh, the Yolais language, it is 100% extinct. The latter is mostly still alive in modern Sardinian dialect, which is basically a mix of uh, neuragic languages with some Latin words and pronunciation. The last were the Corsicans, which I was in doubt if to include them in this video or not because of the link they had with another ancient Italian civilization, but I guess I can talk a bit about them as well since there is not much else to say. Just like the Balares, the Corsicans came from another part of Europe, mixed in with the native Eolais and adopted their culture. They came from Liguria and they were descendants of the Ligurians a people group which was as well as well the results of a Celtic tribe mixing with an Italian tribe. Ligurians were often used by the Romans as mercenaries uh, in the northern front and were described as short and with dark ginger hair. The Corsicans were just like them except they, they preferred sailing and raiding uh, like if they were pirates. Their favorite summer activity was raiding by the coast of Tuscany. The Etruscans did try to settle on their island to sort of patrol the coast and lower the rates of raids, but it did not work out very well. Corsicans also lived north of the Balares territory, and this suggests that the relations between the two were far from friendly. The Corsicans were the ones that got absorbed into Roman culture the fastest, due to, to the already noticeable Etruscan influence in the coastal communities. But the uh, Eolais were having none of that. They hid in the mountains in complete isolation, built funny-looking castles and just minded their own business. That was until 594, when a big Sardinian ruler called Ospito was convicted by, the, by Pope Gregory the Great to convert to Christianity, hoping the Barbaja Mountains to the rest of the world, except that no one really cared, other than the church, that is. Today, most of the costumes, the language, fortresses, and even the genes, as far as we know, are very much intact and will most likely stay this way for at least a couple of more centuries. Speaking of uh, the other two, the Balares and the Corsicans, most of what we know about them, which is very little, is uh, from uh, other foreign sources, to be fair also with the other ones, but at least we know way more and we can guess more from what they left behind. That being said, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time with a brand new video.